1881, the remains of an ancient Roman city were discovered in North Africa, far on the northern tip of modern-day Algeria. The area at that time was a Roman province located on the southern fringes of the empire. The name of the city was Timgad and it was found just as it had been left almost 1,700 years ago. In fact, for a thousand years at one time, it lay abandoned and forgotten, covered underneath the sands of the Sahara Desert. Here's the story of one of Rome's best preserved cities. Timgad was originally built for retired Roman soldiers to be able to settle to after their service in around 100 AD. It was created under the Emperor Trajan, who was one of Rome's most well-respected emperors. Trajan was a soldier emperor who ruled between 98 to 117 AD. He presided over the second greatest military expansion in Roman history after Augustus. He would lead the empire to its maximum territorial extent by the time of his death. So Timgad's construction served two purposes. First, the Roman colony housed veterans of Trajan's mighty armed forces. Secondly, it functioned as a show of Roman power against the Berber tribes of North Africa that populated the northern and western regions of the continent. Where Timgad is built, there was nothing before it. It was built from scratch, and the city was laid out in great precision as one of the best surviving examples of the grid plan used by the ancient Roman city planners. The city boasted a number of temples and bathhouses, a variety of residents for different classes of society, as well as a forum area, a public library, markets, and a basilica. It also has an amazing theater that can hold up to 3,500 people for each performance. The theater appears to have been cut directly from a hill nearby and to this day remains largely intact. There are still even various concerts held there today. Timgad's Forum is another distinct urban detail used by the Romans. The Romans used forums as a public square where residents could buy or sell goods and or for public gatherings. It might have started off as a Roman soldier's retirement home, but within just a couple of generations, Timgad had expanded well beyond. The population totaled well over 10,000 residents, both Roman, African, as well as even Berber descent. The extension of Roman citizenship to non-Romans was a carefully planned strategy of the empire. The city grew for the next 300 years as new quarters were added to the original ground plan, leading to a quadrupling of the original size. During its 2nd and 3rd century, it enjoyed a peaceful existence. Perfectly located at a crucial junction, it gave Romans control of one of the main passes through the Ares Mountains, and therefore access to and from the Sahara. Timgad fell into decline after the Vandal invasion in the 5th century and the subsequent sacking by the Berbers. The city was revived in the 6th century under the Byzantine Emperor Justinian, but it fell once again to an Arab invasion in the 7th century. The site was finally abandoned in the 8th century. Left unprotected, the Sahara Desert moved in and buried the city. Timgad wouldn't be discovered again until a thousand years later when a team of explorers came upon the site while traveling through North Africa. The rediscovery of the ancient city is largely credited to James Bruce. Bruce was a Scottish nobleman who served as the British consul in Algiers, now the capital city of Algeria, in 1763. Though Timgad was discovered by Bruce, it wasn't until the 1880s under French rule that a proper excavation began. All these centuries lying under the sand of the Sahara, Timgad has remained exceptionally well preserved. A 12 meters high triumphal arch still stands, called the Arch of Trajan, which was partially restored in 1900. There's a temple dedicated to Jupiter that is of approximately the same size as the dimensions of the Pantheon in Rome. A large Byzantine citadel stands to the southeast of the city. And of course, the 3500-seat theater, even though it's 2,000 years old, still stands in decent condition. The remnants of the library, a basilica, and four public bathhouses remain. It's been compared to the African equivalent of Pompeii. Tim Gedd still serves as a powerful reminder of how the ancient Romans lived so many years ago.